Hello everyone and welcome to game number 20 of the 1960 World Chess Championship match between Mikhail Tal and Mikhail Botvinnik. And in case you're wondering why there is a Garry Kasparov above my head, well, uh, you're welcome to try and guess and uh, you know give it your best shot in the comment section below. Uh, but it's not very difficult, I assure you. So, um, Tal is 4 points in the lead and, uh, well, everyone is pretty much uh, sure that Tal will win this championship. It would be like uh, I insane if Botvinnik was able to get get out, get out of this one. He would have to start winning games and uh, with, with white and black. So, uh, it's 11 and a half for Tal uh, and he needs tw 12 and a half to actually win this match. So, either win this game or draw uh, the next two games. Uh, this one and the next one. And uh, as Tal says it, uh, he thought that Botvinnik would really give up on actually trying to win this match. Uh, but it's this game, it's game 20 that Botvinnik really uh, gives it gives it his uh, his best uh, creativity uh, and his best attempt to refute Tal's style. And also, it's it's a very nice uh, addition to theoretical knowledge of that time. So, uh, in this game, Botvinnik is white and he opens with c4. And uh, Alexander Koblenz tried to convince Tal to really try and play this game like for real, but uh, Tal said that he couldn't do it. He, he was up 4 points and he couldn't uh, uh, take the match seriously anymore. Uh, he said that the only thing he could think about that this was the la if he manages to draw this one and the next one, then this is the last time he's playing b uh, black against Botvinnik this year, uh, until the, <laughs> the, the, uh, the return match for the World Chess Championship. So, knight to f6, uh, d4, e6, uh, and knight to c3, inviting uh, Tal for a, uh, for a Nimzo Indian defense. Uh, bishop to b4, the Nimzo Indian, and uh, once again we have the same variation. a3, bishop captures, pawn captures, and knight to e4. So, the same as we've had in game 19, game 17, and uh, how is this any different? Uh, well, as, as you remember in the previous games, Botvinnik continued with queen to c2, then we had f5 from Tal, the recommendation from Mark Taimanov's book, uh, but here Botvinnik actually goes e3, and e3 is an excellent move. And Tal says that this really is an invitation for, for a fight, and uh, if Botvinnik uh, played this sooner in the match, uh, then uh, probably all of the games would be more interesting. And here Tal says uh, there is a problem, now black must play f5. Uh, if Tal continues b6, for example, after bishop to d3, attacking the knight, bishop b7 defending the knight, uh, then Botvinnik has this option of going queen to g4. Now there's a double attack on the knight and an attack on the g7 pawn, and Tal really didn't like this position for black. Uh, okay, I mean, you can play knight to f6, queen back to g3, uh, but uh, white, uh, uh, Tal's opinion was that white, white's position is much better here. And another thing is, if you remember from my previous videos, uh, in this position you can never capture the c3 pawn, of course, uh, because queen to c2 and all of, this, all of the retreat squares for the knight uh, are taken. Uh, a4 and e4 by the queen and uh, the uh, b5 and e d5 by the c4 pawn. So, uh, after e3, Tal plays f5. Now, knight captures on c3 is definitely an option, because now after queen to c2, uh, knight can retreat to e4 and he will be protected by the f5 pawn. So, uh, here Tal definitely uh, expected queen to c2, defending the pawn, developing the queen, so on, so on, but Botvinnik played queen to h5 check. And uh, if someone plays a move like this uh, very early, this is move 7, if someone gives you a check on move 7, uh, it's probably a terrible move, it could very well be a blunder, you know, you're probably playing against someone who doesn't really know how, how to play chess, you know, uh, you know the old saying, don't bring your queen out too early, but when a player like Mikhail Botvinnik plays it against you in a World Chess Championship match, especially when he's down 4 points, then you're definitely uh, heading into home preparation territory. So what do you do here? Uh, you don't really have a lot of options here. King to f8, that's uh, too adventurous even for Tal. Uh, so basically g6 is a force. Uh, we have queen to h6 and now if you look at this position, uh, white queen did, uh, did lose a tempo, but uh, look at the dark squares around around this king's position. Uh, black is absent of his dark square bishop as he traded here on, uh, on c3, so all of these dark squares are pretty weak and the queen is very powerful there. And uh, now if you if you play something like queen to g5 uh, to maybe try and exchange and go into the endgame, uh, then queen captures, knight captures and h4 uh, doesn't really give black anything. Knight to e4, you can even go h5 and uh, this position would be very pleasant to play for white, so Tal doesn't want to go for this. So uh, after this, queen to h6, uh, also uh, an idea, hmm, 
uh, Tau played d6, and d6 is an is an interesting idea because it kind of invites Botvinnik to go for queen to g7, uh, which is basically a, a pawn sacrifice. Uh, because after after queen to g7 and queen to f6, uh, you offer a trade of queens. Of course, you have to protect the rook. Uh, now comes queen captures on c7, and this was Tal's idea: knight to a6, attacking the queen, queen to a5, uh, and now b6. A very a very dangerous idea. Queen a4 check, kind of. Uh, forcing king to move because if you block then queen captures knight but this was Tal's idea uh, blocking and now if queen captures uh, now knight to c5 and the queen is trapped you you have to capture the knight so after pawn captures now queen captures on c3 with check uh, forking the rook and the king and after king to d1 now not capturing the rook but actually d captures on c5 if you capture the rook then you lose for a very specific reason uh, but uh, white has the part with the rook either way because uh, now now if you try to protect it with rook to b1 uh, you get rook to d8 and you're lost there is there is not a lot of defense against uh, bishop to a4 double check and uh, if you try and block this for example bishop to d2 then you get bishop to c6 and it's all over uh, you can't defend queen captures on d2 if you try and block with the knight knight f3 simply bishop captures that's why you played bishop to c6 so a very exciting and dangerous position after this d6 move by Tal, uh, inviting Botvinnik for queen to g7. Uh, but Botvinnik isn't interested in this. He plays f3, attacks Tal's knight, uh, we have knight back to f6, and now e4. Uh, e5, uh, bishop to g5, attacking the knight, queen to e7, uh, with the idea of moving the queen to f7 to, to unpin this. As you can't go queen to d7, your knight would be hanging. Uh, queen to d3 and here rook to f8. Rook to f8, Tal says this was pretty much forced. Uh, if you try and develop, for example, with knight to c6, you get e captures on f5. And after e captures on d4 with check, uh, then king to f1 will be very dangerous. Now Botvinnik would be threatening rook to e1, the, the queen and king are still uh, stuck on the e-file. Uh, this would be winning for white. So after bishop to d3, rook to, e, rook to f8 by Tal, and now comes knight to e2. Knight to e2, uh, Tal kind of poetically says that uh, in so many games against uh, this Nimzo Indian, uh, Botvinnik played knight to h3, and now uh, when Botvinnik should have played knight to h3, he plays knight to e2. But it's not really... I mean, Tal, Tal says in his book that uh, queen, to, queen to h4 would be a better idea, and now after black finally unpins, uh, with uh, queen to f7, now bishop to h6, attack the rook, and after rook to g8, now knight to h3, uh, which would follow knight to g5, infiltrating black's position. Uh, but wh where, I mean, th this is a fine continuation, but actually the move Botvinnik played knight to e2 uh, is the engine's favorite. So, although although Tal considers this to be better, Botvinnik's move, I mean, I mean, holds the position. Uh, queen to f7, now finally Tal unpins, queen to h4, and now f captures on e4, f captures on e4, and knight to g4. Now Tal is threatening queen to f2 to finally uh, get rid of all of the pressure and exchange some pieces. Uh, we have h3 attacking the knight, queen to f2, this comes with check, uh, king to d2 and now uh, queen captures on h4. Uh, bishop captures on h4 and now knight to f2 attacking the rook. Uh, rook h to f1 and now knight captures on d3. So all of the exchanges here were forced. Uh, rook captures on f8 uh, and in between move king captures and now uh, king after on d3. So uh, Tal did uh, manage to calm down the situation, but uh, still all of his pieces are undeveloped. He's t he has to do something about this, and then everything will be okay. Uh, bishop to e6, uh, we have knight to g3, knight to d7, again developing a piece, knight to f1, uh, and now a6. And here Botvinnik plays bishop to f2. Uh, which is uh, definitely a nice move. Uh, Tal's idea when he played a6 was that if Botvinnik decides to play knight to e3, uh, to play knight to d5 to attack the c7 pawn, uh, then uh, b5 was Tal's idea. And now if you play this, now you get pawn captures on c4, king captures and c6 uh, winning the knight. So uh, instead of going with the knight, bishop to f2 by Botvinnik and now king to g7. Uh, now going b5 doesn't really do anything as you know the whole b5 idea was was simply preparing to get rid of the knight if it came to a3 now d5 is definitely an option so bishop has to move and then knight to d2 defending c4 uh this would be okay for white uh so after knight uh, so after this bishop to f2 uh, king to g7 uh, preparing uh the f file for the rook knight to d2 rook to f8 now comes the bishop to e3 as the bishop was attacked on f2, b6, uh, rook to b1, and now knight to f6. 
uh, and uh, it was in this position on move 27 that uh, Botvinnik offered Tal a draw and uh, Tal after suffering a lot in this game as he did uh, run into some serious preparation uh, immediately agreed uh, to a draw. Uh, I, yeah, I mean okay you might argue that it's a weird why would you offer a draw here you are down four points you're trying to maintain your title as the world chess champion uh, but you know Botvinnik was like that he he thinks Tal earned it, he, you're not gonna win this game, I mean the position is equal, forcing this would maybe even lose another game. So better better to give another game a try, next game you're playing black, so may, maybe give your best then. And uh, even if you lose the title, you always have the rematch. So uh, in this position, both when you go for the draw and Tal gladly accepted it. So this is game 20 and we are one game away from uh, the last game of the 1960 World Chess Championship and from ending this series. So I do hope you enjoyed uh, this game, I do hope you enjoyed the entire series and um, if you haven't seen the entire series there is a link in the description below where you can check it out. Uh, also I highly recommend you check out my coverage of the 1959 World uh, Candidates Tournament, the tournament Tal had to win uh, to actually qualify uh, to challenge Botvinnik for the title. So th th those are some interesting games. So yeah, uh, once again, I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Tony Mowat Guitar for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot, I really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching and I will see you soon uh, with pro probably with the last game of the 1960 World Chess Championship. Thank you all and I'll see you soon.